Hello, this is an introduction video about Artemis Mission Editor, a program I made to edit missions for a game Artemis. If you never played Artemis or don't know what it is, I really suggest you try it out. It's a great uh, space bridge simulation game, which is basically a bunch of your friends or your family all playing different roles on a spaceship. And it's really a lot of fun, no matter if you are a science fan, uh, fiction fan or not. It's just, it combines the computer game experience, the role-playing game experience, and a kind of tabletop game experience, and, and so on. It's, it's really great. Really, try it out, uh, I suggest. So, this program is a mission editor. And why I made this program is because I think currently it's uh, really hard to make missions for Artemis. Basically, to make missions uh, like by writing uh, an XML file by your hand. You have to type it, type it all down and if you typo or you forget some important stuff like an ending slash or something, it will crash on you and you will have hard time figuring out what exactly is the fault. And basically you have to remember everything by heart, like what did you name that variable, or you have to scroll your text file and so on. So I thought I can make it better and easier. So that's why I made this. This program has the ability to do everything you can do in your text editor. Uh, you can add events, start uh, commentaries, you can copy and paste, you can add conditions, actions, copy and paste them as well, and so on. What it also does, it allows you to add folders, so you can structureize your events into folders, and that allows you to group uh, some common tasks, uh, because the mission uh, scripting language is not very sophisticated, very very complex yet, and some uh, simple actions you have to do with multiple events. For example, if you want to have an event that fires when you undock from the station or when you are not docked to the station, you have to make one event, which is if docked, and um, uh, then it sets some timer, to one second, and the other event for the timer finished, and then and that's basically your two events do one uh, task, and you will have this a lot. So grouping the events into folders is really, I think, a good addition. You can also, of course, rename your nodes and folders, so you can uh, uh, keep using comments and just name your folder like some group one so you know what's this about, and same for your events, and so on. You can also nest your folders, one and another, and of course, events too. So here's that. Also, you can edit your expressions, not by editing your text, like this, like you change your, your name, your value, but like this in a graphical interface. So you basically change it, set IDI command, chase player if it's anywhere outside the nebula or closer than 1000 meters inside the nebula for object with name and one. Also, uh, the program will uh, control what attributes are shown for you. For example, this is an add AI statement. It looks like this. It has uh, the attribute name, use gem selection, target name, type, and four values. Now, those are not always make sense. You see contextual to the type of the AI block. This means that, for example, for the command try to become leader, there is no variables. Uh, variables mean nothing. And if you use uh, objects selected by the game master, the name means also nothing. And the program will not show it it will hide it for you. And also it will tag uh, the exact values, like for example, for the command chase player, uh, value one will be, uh, I believe, let me, let me check. Value one will be the closer than value for the, when the player is outside the nebula, and value two will be the closer than value 
when a player is inside a nebula. And what does what happens if value one is not existent, not present, but value two is? You may not know, but the program will tell you. It, it, in this program, you'll just select anywhere outside the nebula or up to something inside the nebula, and it will automatically make sure this happens in game, because the logical rules are input into the program already. And if you choose some other rule, it tells you that this very value 2 that was before specifying the distance is now specifying the throttle. So you know that. So you don't have to remember what does this value 1 means here. You know it by looking at the screen. Also, it will automatically control the value boundaries for you. Now, for example, create statement. Your x attribute must be within the boundaries of 0 to 100,000. If it's minus 1, the game will crash. So it won't let you do it. It will tell you that this is not a valid value. It will only let you to input something that is valued. And it will show in red what's wrong and will raise a flag. So you can quickly see uh, what statements have uh, errors in them and will possibly crash your game. Also, it remembers the names uh, of the variables, timers, and objects, and shows them in the drop-down. It's very useful when you have a big missions like the Hammock Sector mission, because there's a lot of timers and variables, and this will allow you to choose them from a simple menu. You don't, you don't typo anymore when your timer name is something 20 plus letters. You just pick it from, this, from the list, and that's it. Don't have to remember it as well, don't have to write it down, that's easy. Same for the variables, of course. And same for the object names, like for example, new action, set property of object named. You can choose your stations, your players, generic meshes, neutrals and enemies, that's it. So here's that. What it also allows, it allows you to edit and add, create statements using the space map graphical interface. So you don't have to manually type all this, all these coordinates and imagine in your head where is that point uh, 98,000 by 85,000. You can just use the graphical interface to do it. So here's that. Here's your space map, your quadrants, you can zoom in, zoom out, and you can edit everything, like move shapes, add new stuff, remove stuff, you can modify the generics, uh, I mean name, nameless objects as well, which And then you just save the changes, and it, it all changed. It didn't even move the statements around. It, they remained in their place, so you can now see the statements have changed. It's now like, it, like I changed it. So here's that as well. And you can see the XML code behind any of these statements at any time. So you can, if, you, if you see something you don't understand, like destroy nebulas within, what does it mean? You click uh, show XML statement and you see that it's a destroy near kind of a statement with type nebulas, radius, uh, etc, etc. So, same thing you can do for your nodes. And you can of course copy that to your clipboard so you can paste it into your editor and do whatever you want with it. Well, that's it. Uh, in the next videos, I'll make a tutorial about how to use this editor. I hope you try it out and I hope it's useful to you because I basically made this not for myself but for other mission makers uh, out there. I hope this makes, uh, this makes it easier for you to do your job and we'll see a lot of good Artemis missions more in the future. And I really hope you can spare some time and give me some feedback about what you like, what you don't like, what's easy, what's, uh, what's awkward, and what should I improve 
what should I uh, change so it so, so it's easier for you to use this program. And if you find any bugs, please tell me. I'll try to fix them myself. Well, thanks for watching.